Hey, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Hey, good morning. So I wasn't on yesterday. I needed a day. I needed a day just to be with God for a little bit, you know? Um, but so we left off on the seven deadly sins. We finished off. Um, we left off with envy. And I said after that lesson, I wanted to get into um, God's extended mercy. But before that, access to God is what we're going to focus on first before we go further. So access to God, a personal encounter. Um, this is for everyone, everyone who who opens their heart to Jesus. It's for everyone. So in Matthew 27, 51 through 54 is where we're going to look into, but I'm just going to wait a few minutes. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. And so part of this study is when well, we're focusing on Job and the seven churches. So I'm kind of like adding and I'm also, well, I'm not adding to the word, but I'm just like looking at Job's attributes, like his attitude and, and how um, his heart was towards God. And one of the seven churches that I was looking at um they have unfinished deeds and it's not it's not deeds like outwardly it's deeds in their heart they're unrepentive they're not this is um a church that is um not having true remorse for the things that they're doing and they're continuing to live their life this way and so this is what the holy spirit has me on a, a journey um to talk to the specific church because we're living in the last days. So the specific church really needs to understand true remorse. Um, remorse. True remorse, you don't continue to go back. You don't continue to turn to that vomit, you know? You don't continue to live your life um, what seems right for you. So let me just bring you to this church really quick so you have an idea of this church. Um, this church is also, like to me, when I'm reading the, the seven churches, I'm noticing that um, this church is no different than the church of Lacidia. Lacidia, this church is lukewarm. They're lukewarm. So this also is like an unfinished deed as well. So good morning. So this main, this main reason for this study it brings us to the seven churches, which is us, the body of Christ. And when you read the word of God, um, you are supposed to see, perceive, understand, and, and your ear too, hear, and, t and look at the mirror, James puts it. Look at the mirror. And not just quickly look at it, you know, but really look at it and, and try to see what, what I can correct, you know? So when you look at the seven churches, you will see that we have done all these things in history. Maybe not us necessarily, but in the church in general, in the church in, of Christianity has definitely done these things. We have accepted the teachings of the Nicolaitans, which is um, the holidays the, that go off of pagan, you know, pagan holidays mixed with Christianity. And in the Old Testament, to be set apart is very big. So the same God that we serve is in the, in the Old Testament. In fact, this is Jesus himself. And he hated this teaching. So the Holy Spirit has me on a mission to get this church to understand true remorse. True remorse is not a quick apology. You know, a quick, um, true remorse is really putting death, mourning over that sin, which is usually back then a sign of fasting right they used to fast 
and they would put ashes on them. This was an outward sign. This person was in mourning for the sin or whatever it was, they were in mourning, you know? And so that was a sign. Jesus says, I want it from the heart. So, in, in, in fact, if he goes into our hearts, he does. In the seven churches, he goes in our hearts. He knows our works. He knows our deeds. And so this there's this church that has unfinished deeds. So, thank God we're not saved by our works. You know, we're saved by grace and mercy. But we're definitely judged upon our deeds in truth, in our hearts. And it's important to look at that you know, ser so, um, seriously, you know, it's a matter of life and death, you know, um, um, so yeah, we have to look in that mirror because what, when he, when we hit the judgment, you know, the judgment, when you go to the book of revelations, which is the book of basically judgment, we, the churches get judged first, you know, so we should take heed to the correction, you know, so, um, the Church of Sidarius, I may not be saying that name correctly, so just bear with me. Um, but there's the Church of uh, Sidarius and Lacidia that I see very similar. And I feel like they're, they're amongst us. This is a, a type of Christian, you can see. It's a type of Christian. Okay, so, to the angel of the church in Sidarius, right. These are the words of him who hold the seven spirits. Okay, the seven spirits is the seven churches, which is us. It's no longer a building. So hello, good morning, everyone. So the seven churches is no longer a built. It's not a building. It's us. You know, he that has an ear, let him hear. And he that has an eye, let him see. Uh, it is Jesus put his Holy Spirit in us. We are, this is our, where he rests. So we should be respectful what we do in the body. You know, um, so these are the words of him who hold the seven stars, the, the seven spirits, he holds them, of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds and you have a repetition of being alive. So this can be, um, you know, a church who's, you know, on fire. It looks like that from the outside, but they're on repentive. They do not mourn or put to death their sins maybe they are on fire on sunday and then when they go throughout their week they're going to the strip club they're you know chained to addiction to drugs or alcohol um this is to be put to death if we claim the name of jesus who breaks the chains we should no longer be in chain to those seven deadly sins you know now, or it can be a christian or even a pastor because it this happens to pastors too where they preach the word of God, but then they're abusive to their loved ones when they get home and they have the spirit of wrath in them, the spirit of anger. And so they are dead inside. They have a repetition of being alive outside, but inside they are good as dead, Jesus says. This is this is the seven deadly sins, guys. Um, I'm still working on my poster, but I hope I don't drop any of this stuff. <laughs> I'm still working on my poster, but... Lust, um, you know, this could be a church who claims that they are free. They claim the name of Jesus. By the way, when you claim his name, but yet are enslaved into some kind of sin, um, you are worshiping him in vain, you know? Um, okay, so lust, John 2, 16, 17. For everything in the world, the lusts of the flesh. Okay, so the everything that's in the world is the lusts of the flesh. Um, but the lusts of the eyes and the pride of life. So these things are worldly. Um, eyes of lust and the pride of life comes not from the Father. This does not come from the Father. So if you have this... You need to pray and fast for it to flee in Jesus' name. I have dealt with this spirit. It is a spirit. It is a spirit. It will come into you. Um, just like it came into um, Peter. You remember? There was an instant. There was um, a situation. Uh, I forget what it was. But 
Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, to Peter. So this can happen to anyone. It can happen. And if it happens to his disciples, and we are now disciples, by the way, that means student in Hebrew. Um, once you accepted him, he will teach you. And now you're a student. So you're a disciple. Uh, gluttony, Proverbs 23, 1 through 3. When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are given to gluttony, uh, do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. So if you claim the name of Jesus and you, you basically are a glutton, you know, you have the spirit of gluttony and you are enchained in that. And so you look as alive outside, you know, you share the gospel, you're on fire, but yet you're enslaved to gluttony. You have the spirit of gluttony. So if you're going to claim the name of Jesus, you have to break free of these addictions, you know, fast, pray, you know, if you are a smoker, just quit for a couple days. And I almost, I almost bet you if you, they say, if you do it for 21 days, if you do anything for 21 days, it turns into a habit. So if you try to do quit smoking for 21 days, set a marker out for you, I bet that you would be able to quit. Yes, you'll have cra cravings every now and then because that's what the devil does. He tries to come in with the seven more uh, um, other demons. You remember what Jesus says? When you clean up the place, he will come back with seven more. That's why we're told to stay sober-minded and vigilant because the adversary is, you know, here to still kill and destroy us, you know? That's his mission. And if he can fill us up with sin, he is accusing us of not proclaiming the true name of Jesus and living in sin, that we're not really free, you know, we're not really free because we're enslaved. We're allowing ourselves to be enslaved. And that's, Jesus didn't come here for you to stay enslaved. He came here for you to be free and to live in truth. Okay, so um, greed, Hebrews 13.5. Now this is very easy to get into. Uh, we look around and sometimes we are led by what we see. And um, the grass, you know, sometimes isn't always greener on the other side, but yet we are envious, right? Sometimes we're envious of what others have. So it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. So always have a humble heart, be content. Uh, Jesus is our shepherd. We shall not want. We should be fully content in that and not trying to create our own kin kingdom here, by the way, which people are trying to do. Sloth, slothfulness. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, it says, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. So... We should always be working with our hands, keeping busy. The, um, in Paul's time, um, when he was discipling, you know, more bully, you know, he was helping other believers. They were working. They were they were basically waiters, so they were working to earn money. So don't fall into laziness. You know, do not fall into slothfulness. We should always be keeping busy and working. Finding the right job, though, that aligns with our faith can be tricky sometimes, I understand. But we should always be working. Plus, uh, the disciples, uh, Mary, Mar Martha, and some of the other women, helped contribute to Jesus' ministry. So, it is part of the work. It's part of the work. We're supposed to be busy with our hands. Um, wrath. Now, this is can be very easy to get into. This is something that I struggle with. Um, I struggle with all of them, to be honest with you at times. Um, but we're supposed, to, if we profess Jesus' name and that we're free, we should be free indeed. We should not be going back to these deadly deeds. They're, that's what they are. They're deadly deeds. And the wages of sin is death. So we should break free of that. Um, so wrath, it says Romans... Uh, 12 9 do not take revenge 
my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. So anytime you feel like that person that cut you off and you get a little angry, remind yourself, be humble, be content. Um, you know, vengeance is the Lord's, you know. Vengeance is the Lord's. There is nothing else you need to do. You don't need to go cut that person off again and stick the middle finger up. You do not need to do that, especially if you claim the name of Jesus. Um, he is he, The victory has already come. We, we already won. We just need to wait on him. Let's not be like the Israelites in the desert where we were complaining. They were complaining and trying to do things for themselves and looking at the, the things from Egypt. You know, be... Try to find content, you know? Okay, so envy. It says, let us not become con um, conceited, okay? Let us not be conceited, provoking and envying each other. Okay, this is Galatians 5, 26. Let us not be conceited and let us not provoke each other to envy. Because that's pretty easy to do too, you know? Um, if you know that something causes your brother or sister to sin... Do not do it. Whatever it is. And, and if you're not quite, like if they don't tell you, but you see them act a certain way, try to, try to go before them. You know, just like Christ went before us and helped us. Try to go before them and just examine what it could be that you could be doing that could be causing them to get easily angry at you or whatever it is. You know, try to do those, those things. I try to do those things. It's very hard sometimes. Because you instantly, you you want to, instantly, we, we all want to be right in what we're doing, but we're not always right, you know? And we don't always know what's going on in the other person's mind, you know? Or what they're going through, or why, why they act the way they do, you know? Uh, pride. So pride is really the, the first thing that happens before a fall. You know, it's, it's actually the first sin that happens and then everything else grows then you got lust and you got gluttony greed sloth wrath envy because pride is what you you think is right and the word says that there's a way that seems right to man but it leads to death so and you you do what you know you pick out verses too some christians do this they pick out verses and they say oh you know it must it could be okay to do this just this one verse you know, um, yeah, that's also something that is predicted, well, also a prophecy in the Bible, you know, it's, that's going to happen in the last days, that people are going to pick, and they're going to go after their own doctrines, you know, and they're going to be deceived by, um, you know, spirits, by evil spirits, so, we should be on watch for that. Um, so pride, Proverbs 8, 13, it says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. Okay, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. So pride also has arrogant behavior and perverse speech. You know, that's usually what happens with pride. But so we went through the whole seven deadly sins. And now we're going to move into God's extended mercy. Um, because I'm sure about you, you looked at this. You feel a little weighed down from it. Um, we all fall short of the glory sometimes, you know. The important thing is that we get back up. Uh, we do not stay in that, you know. We do not stay in that. The wicked person stays in that, you know. We keep persevering. The thing is, is that we should uh, try to overcome, you know. There is another church that, you know, Jesus says, for the one that overcomes, just as I have overcome, he expects us to overcome. So we should try to overcome because that's what he expects of us. So this one church, Sidarius, just to like refresh you, you probably already know about it. Um, these are the words of, uh, of him who holds the seven spirits of God. And the, and the seven stars, I know your deeds. You have a repetition of being alive. Like I was saying, there's a church that's alive, maybe goes to church on Sunday, and then throughout the week falls into those 
the seven deadly sins. It's very easy. I mean, it's happened to me where I'll go to church and then something will happen. And this is why we have to be careful with our emotions because our emotions can lead us astray. Um, and you will get given to that anger. Um, and there you go. You're not, you gotta, this is part of self-control. You know, this is part of self-control. We have to be slow to anger and quick to listen. Um, so I know your deeds. You have a repetition of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I found your deeds unfinished in my sight. Why would they be unfinished? Because they're unrepented. This is a church. Um, they have, they have, the... The wages of sin is death. Jesus paid the price. They're unfinished because they have not repent for the sins that they're doing or continuously doing. So that the that the price for that sin has been paid for once they turn to Jesus and, and deny themselves. You know, they 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 think they are righteous. Like this is another church in Lasidia. I'll just take you guys through it really quick. Lasidia. They say that they're rich and they require nothing. They don't turn to God and say, don't, they don't deny. The part, part of being a Christian is denying yourself, taking up your cross daily. It's a daily thing to take up your cross is to deny yourself, you know, to say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And he wants, his will is to have heaven on earth and in order for that to happen, we have to be without sin. Our garments have to be cleansed, you know. If we have, if we say we believe in Jesus, but we do not, you know, look in that mirror and repent for all the sins we do, the debt is still there, you know. Think about David. David's a great example. He receives the Holy Spirit when he was anointed by Samuel, all right. He sins after just like most of us Christians, we sin after. Okay, I'm not going to say that um, life is perfect once you're a Christian, because it's not. It actually gets harder, because now that you recognize what is good and evil, um, if you're if you're in the Word and you're looking what, what God expects of us, then you will see what is good and evil. But we do fall short of the glory, Paul says. We do fall. He had a thorn in his flesh, something he was struggling with. A messenger from Satan, you know, we all have something that we truly struggle with. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, it's a messenger from Satan trying to still kill and destroy you. The point of matter is, where does Paul turn? He turns to the Lord Almighty and he says, Father, take this thorn from my flesh. And you know what God says? My grace is sufficient for you. You know, this is, this is, I need you to turn. Sometimes these thorns in our flesh is is to keep us turning to him, you know, so not relying on our own strength, but continually turning to him saying, oh God, you know, I need your help. I need you to keep me on the right path. Keep, keep my feet from falling into, um, temptation, deliver me from evil, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, this church has unfinished deeds. It's unrepentive, you know? Um, so in this other church, Lacidia, well, I'm just going to read it really quick. It says, I know your deeds, okay, that you are neither cold or hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So this could be, you know, a church. They're either, they're either hot or cold. You know, they're either on fire for God or they're like falling asleep in the pews, you know, um, and it's not even just in the building. Like, I'm not talking about just the building. It could be in your everyday life. You know, when you go to work or school or you're out in public, do people know that you're a Christian? And if they do know that, does your fruits show? Can they say, wow, you truly are a Christian? Or do they say, wow, you're a Christian? This is what Christianity is. I don't want anything to do with it. That's what a lot of people say. When you there is people out there who say I'm a Christian, and then they see the fruits of your labor. You know, like they'll see how you handle with customers, and this is something that I struggle with. So I know that this could be, you know, me too. You know, like 
sometimes I have a lot of to-do lists at work and with when it comes to customers I'm like oh gosh here comes another one and another one and they always ask really silly questions you know and it's just like seriously <laughs> you know I, I really want this day to be over you know and people see that you know and especially what you speak to they see they listen to that so yeah, people are watching, especially if you pers uh, profess. So Jesus says, you know, I wish you were either one or the other, you know. I wish you were Luke. I wish you were at least, um, let's see, he says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Um, you say I am rich and I have required wealth and do not need a thing. So a lot of Christians believe that they are they're entering into heaven. A lot of them are very confident in that. And then there's nothing wrong with being confident. We should be confident. But some people are so confident where it makes them fall into the category of being proud. And that's one of the seven deadly sins, you know? And they fall into that category and um, they become unrepentive. They are comfortable too where they're at. And they don't have the fear of the Lord. They're just continuing to live their life this way. This is not what Jesus, he does not like this, apparently. He says, um, you say I'm rich and I have required wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, and blind, and naked. And this is what he says. I counsel you. By the way, he is the counselor. So just look at this church closely. This is a church that may not be looking to Jesus as a counselor to work through their problems. They say, I don't need you. You know, maybe their prayers are basically empty. You know, maybe they're not praying for things uh, that they need help with. Okay, at least here I am admitting to you that I struggle with um, most of the seven deadly sins. We're supposed to confess our sins, by the way. It is part of healing and also... Um, when I hear your confession, I can pray for you. And when you hear my confession, I can, uh, um, you can pray for me. So we're supposed to confess our sins. This is a church that may not be confessing sins and their, their, their prayers might be, um, might be pretty vain, you know, only thinking about like, um, themselves, not, not thinking about others, you know, too. Um, but this is what he says, I counsel you, okay? He is the counselor, so they're not going to him as a counselor. They're going to him, I don't know, maybe to to have a ticket into heaven, I don't know. They're not going to, to him as, as, his count, as, as his counselor. He's the counselor. So he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire. Um... So you can become rich. Um, white clothes to wear. So you can cover. Okay, so why he says white clothes to wear? Because their clothes is like filthy rags. They are not repenting. You know, they, it's their, their clothes is probably like bright red, you know, crimson red, you know, because it's, it's unrepentive. And um, that's what why Jesus says, um, I require of you, requiring of you to get, um, to, to buy gold refined in fire, um, so you can become rich and white clothes, clothes to wear. So you can cover, um, your shameful nakedness. By the way, the nakedness is a symbol of sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, they realized they were naked. So nakedness means sin, and this sin on repentance. So that's what that means. Um, so, and sleeve to put on your eyes so you can see. This can be seeing that you're not all that perfect, okay? This is part of denying. You're not all that perfect. You don't have it all together, you know? Salvation is a gift, and it's, it's, it's by grace, right? We're saved, but... If you're not repenting, if you're not turning, you 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 remain in filthy rags, you know. And that's the truth, okay. And then you see where we are right now, you know. There's a lot of people who 
believe that they don't need to repent. It's a daily thing. So what book and scripture? So um, I was just sharing, like part of this lesson that I'm sharing, I'm the Holy Spirit is teaching me something and also wanting me to share it because we are living in the last days. This is a type of people, it's not a building, you know, because the Holy Spirit, we're, we are now the seven churches. Um, the seven churches was used as a, um, you know, a way to explain, you know, this is a type of people. And here we are living in the last days. If you look at history, a lot of, a lot of everything, like a lot of what's in the book of Revelations, especially with, with the seven churches, the teachers of the Nicolaitans, the Jezebel prophet, um, this is all happening. This has been happening for a while, actually. Um, when I can find the history of the early church, I will show you when, because the church did not agree with following um, the pagan holidays and, and actually, uh, you know, adding Christianity. And by the way, this is something, the devil is very crafty. He did this to the Israelites back in, in, that, in those days with the temple. Um, they would... They, uh, the devil would basically bring in paganism into the temple. So the devil is now trying to do that with their bodies, trying to get us to do pagan holidays with our bodies, you know. And being that we're most of America are Christian, most of America, this was a, a nation founded in Christianity. Not anymore, though, I'll tell you, um, because we have let... We've mixed, and in the Old Testament, it was very, it was very clear that you were told to be set apart. And when you let the foreigner come in, you had to be very careful not to go after their gods. And you see, America has let other religions come in, and now what's happening? Confusion. God did not give us a spirit of confusion, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So there should be no confusion of where, what we believe in. But they're causing confusion with these multi-different religions. And they're mixing and mingling. And this, this is also prophesied too. This is prophesied. This would happen. So this one church yeah, has, already, has already happened. And this is, a, this is a Mormon. I am not a Mormon. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. These different nominations, by the way, is also a little seed from the devil. Our bodies are not, the body of Christ is not to be separated. These are all doctrines of, of your own view, your own worldly view. I'm not in a church right now because